Good afternoon or good morning everybody, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, this is being live streamed on Facebook, so if you're watching on Facebook, there may be the possibility for some interaction later on. What about all, good evening? All good evening. Thanks. We're also filming it for YouTube, we're going to try and edit it together, so if somebody says anything particularly controversial, we can chop that out. Um, those of you who don't know, my name is Richard Foster and I run Strom Sports Nutrition based in Shrewsbury. This to my right is William Carver, who is a bodybuilder and stuff. Crossfit. Um, this is Andrew Keeler from Arc Nutrition. Um, he was my first ever coach. And this is, I'm sure all of you know, Dave Crossland um, from the Under Construction series. Um, we're going to do a bit of a Q&A today. We've had questions pre-submitted. Some of them will be perhaps more controversial and other ones will be less controversial. Um, so we're going to start off with um, the first question that we got which would be, as it's coming into the off-season, I think particularly appropriate, everyone's done their shows, what people feel the best approach to an off-season is. It's quite a broad question, covers lots of things from nutrition, training and drugs. Um, would anyone like to lead on that? Well, I'm not sure about the best approach, but I think a common mistake is, I caught on 2,000, I'm going to bulk, so now I'm going to eat four. Yeah. So essentially, like I was going to say, throwing all your tools in at once yeah just it, it's your body any big change in anything we do with our bodies is going to create a very strong opposing reaction sometimes we use that to our advantage like water manipulation but when it comes to diet and food you want small gradual increments over a prolonged period of time if you want to manage it correctly particularly coming off the back of a show diet yeah and I understand, you know, you've dieted, you've starved yourself, you're knackered, you're fucked, all you want is pizza and cheesecake. But you can't then go into an off-season diet eating shit because, yeah, first four or five weeks, you're going to be full of the house, you're going to get loads of weight, you're going to look more vascular, then all of a sudden, and you're suddenly going to wake up and you're going to be a fat bastard. So what's relevant, I suppose, William has just done the British. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what's the approach that you're taking? I mean... I'm a bit of a unique individual where I can get away with eating a lot more food than most people. But um, still, again, when I came off of my show prep diet, not a lot changed, really. Just the more food, of it. More of it, yeah. Um, I wasn't doing cardio anyway. Um, Good. Hormone wise, a lot of it was cleaned out. Mm. A lot of it. Um, and it was mainly a focus up until now, being six weeks post show of getting healthy. Um, focusing on getting rested, getting healthy, increasing my food, quality of food. Of course there's shit in there. It's 80% 80 80 clean, 20% shit, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, but that's me having a balanced lifestyle. And I've grown, I've grown really well. If anything, I've, I've found it hard trying not to grow. So I've been trying to keep it a little bit more controlled. And you've been effectively off Hormones, pretty much. Period. Yeah, pretty this, much. This, this is a bit that confuses me. Right, I'm going to do a rebound cycle. Why? Your I, body's going to want to grow anyway. It so, is, so why throw drugs at it? Wait till you yeah, stop. Exactly. <coughs> I, I found that my body before I would, I've rebounded before, and what I found personally with me having higher metabolism is I threw calories at my body and my metabolism just went crazy, and I struggled with gaining weight, um, fatigue digestive issues, inflammation issues, water retention, but and I wasn't getting anywhere. I think as well with that, it wasn't so much that you had too many calories, it was that you weren't being efficient physically within the body with I'm the exactly. calories. Yeah. So you put a load of food in and your stomach's gone Yeah. Where if you manage that intake, your digestive tract manages it with it. 100%, yeah. I was, I'm, I've had a much, it's definitely been, I've, I've definitely noticed a difference in my body using calories more efficiently. Mm. Nutrient partitioning goes through the roof. What I'm, what I'm, I can almost guarantee will happen once I start up again, which will be very soon. I'll have a second rebound. Mm. So it's so essentially what I've seen over the last six weeks. So I've gained 20 pounds, of which Richard can already tell you is pretty good quality. 20 pounds considering. No homo. <laughs> Um, a slight one, really. A little bit. Yeah. And it's not, pretty not, not only that, but I feel great. I feel awesome. I don't feel heavy. <coughs> and then I feel I feel healthy. I definitely feel so much thicker. And when I go back on hormones, I'm going to get that second rebound. And you mentioned about going back on hormones soon. One of the reasons William's come down today was to get his blood work done. So he's been down to see Aaron from the Hench Project, and you've had 
health markers primarily looked at? That's right, yeah. Anything specific that you're looking for? Um, for me personally, um, or, or obviously looking at all your blood panels, uh, red, white blood cells, LDL, HDL, but for me primarily livers and kidneys, yeah. mainly. Um, I've always suffered from liver issues. Um, that's just something I've always had my whole life. So when it comes to going to my next phase of growing and being able to eat a lot of foods, being on a on cycle again, I want to make sure my body's healthy before it is able to tolerate that. Sure. So that's a sensible way of doing it, I think. I mean, yeah. I mean, one thing I've obviously in the past not been very sensible. Yeah. Well, maybe slightly. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I did notice, and one thing I think a lot of people miss, is the health aspect, and not in a sense of health as in markers, as in feeling healthy. And I, 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 I learn at what point I need to end my cycles, not by because I've been on so long or I've done this or I've done that, because I, I felt ill. Yeah. I started to feel run down, I started to feel drained, niggles started to come, training intensity started to drop. I, you I, will grow better and train better if you are healthy. And I think that's a point that a lot of people miss because they go after more drugs, more drugs, more drugs. Yeah, I took a shitload of drugs, but it was in a controlled environment. I wasn't taking drugs just because I wanted to. Control. Well, it, it, was, it was in the sense that I was very aware of the amounts I was taking yeah. and the severity of the amounts I was using. Is this in the first film or the second film? Second film, I lost my weight a little bit. I first to admit that I got very drug focused in the second film, and I yeah. started to look at. And I think it's something a lot of people go through. What else can I take to grow more? When what I should have been doing is going back to the basics, doing the same thing, which is what I did in the first film when I grew incredibly well. I think you'll probably agree when I say that sometimes you have to take a step back. Yeah, like yeah. Sports. I mean, I've never yeah. really had an issue with training. Uh, I've always, always been very efficient with my training. But I did get overly focused on the drugs in the second film. There's no doubt about that. And I, I started to look at it right. What more can I take? What can I? Do? Instead of thinking, you know what, my training's not actually going that well at the moment. What can I do to fix that? I need to fix that. Yeah. I started looking at how do I fix the problem with drugs. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people fall down that, that route. Uh, and it, I remember speaking to Andy Bolton years ago, and uh, he'd started a new brand, and it was a particularly well-produced brand. Uh, and I asked him how he was getting on with it, and he said, I'm not using it. And he went, why? I said, because I feel rough on it. I said, well, that's because it's strong. He went, yeah, but if when I feel rough, rough it. I can't train hard enough. I can't train effectively. And it seems to be an area that everybody neglects is the training. Yeah. Everyone asks questions about drugs. Yeah. Everyone researches <coughs> drugs. And everyone to a large degree researches nutrition. And every single person you speak to, every single person I speak to in the shop will tell you that they train hard. Yeah. But how many people, when's the last time you got asked about your routine? Or your rep tempo? I mean, or how intensely you train? Or what protocols you use in your yeah. training? 100%, yeah. You and get asked about diet from the more knowledgeable ones? Idiots ask about the drugs, guy, they always do. The guys that have been doing it longer and know what they're doing always are more interested in training and diet. And there's barely any talk about hormones. Yeah, and yet there's still training seems to be the, the neglected cousin almost. You know, it's diet. If, you, if you're switched on and you're intelligent and you're a sensible trainer, then you ask about diet. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been asked about training style. I've been asked about weight, what I lift, what I did, but no one's ever gone into depth about, so how do you do that to, to do this and what do you, you know, no one's gone into that sort of yeah. depth and yet, none of this is fucking happening if you ain't training in the first place. And I think a lot of it is because in terms of getting in shape, in terms of looking good in the gym, if you take some hormones and you train a bit and you diet, and you do the diet part well, you'll look decent. Yeah. And for a lot of people we speak to nowadays that aren't bodybuilders, they just want to look good in the gym, they're quite happy with that. And, and I understand the logic as well, because it, it's like, if I want to go down the shop, which is within walking distance, I'll drive. Yeah. So if I want to look all right on my holiday, I'll use a bit of test and fat burners. Why would I put extra hard work in the gym if I've got an easy route? 
But yeah. what what everyone seems to miss with this stuff is the bottom line with hormone use is we don't really know. We have no studies on super pharmacological doses. We have no studies that cover uses trends. And the truth is, the lifting community and the user community are the guinea pigs. Yeah, yeah very much so. We actually don't know. I mean, it's interesting you said before someone we talk about cycle doses and stuff, and you said, "Oh, well, I was doing a cycle, and it, you know, it was a gram, gram and a half, not crazy doses. A gram, a gram and a half isn't considered to be a big dose anymore." No, go back to 15 years. It, it was. certainly was. Yeah. yeah. If you read, if you go back and read like UK Muscle from 10 years ago, old threads on there, a gram, a gram and a half was a decent whack. Was, was whereas now it's people doing it first cycle. I, I, I know. I, I, think, I think a lot of people's excuses nowadays was quality was better back then and I'm sure look I'm, I'm no. sure I'm sure some of it was right I'm sure there was some good stuff but let's get, get the fucking problem, no. let's get to the Idiotic. chase right people Idiotic. are training like shit and they're not eating good enough these days okay. and that's why that's why they're not looking as good yeah. when you talk to the old guys it's all about hardcore training isn't exactly. it exactly uh, and they all got war stories and you think they are war stories but the truth is back then it's just training it was. was yeah the training was the most important thing yeah you were regarded as being on a lift if you couldn't bench four plates i can lift that's all i got <laughs> but I, can I, I can't anymore <laughs> but you, you know what i mean you weren't classed as being no a problem. hard trainer to you but certain <laughs> thresholds with sure, strength. Pretty. no but th that's it the main reason why everybody goes to drugs is because it's easy yeah training really really hard consistently day in day out week to week month to month is difficult yeah it's yeah. exhausting having your diet on point day to day for months on end it's fucking difficult and having, that, having that level of consistency is really really difficult adding two extra orals is really fucking easy yeah that's why people are so obsessed with drugs it's like DMP prep yeah <laughs> well that's very popular at the moment I, no but that's it though <laughs> what because do you do? somebody, somebody thinks oh right I so get if, if well, I, well, I get wet on DMP well you're broken obviously <laughs> do your mitochondria work the wrong way around I don't fucking know what happened and it was lethal stuff as well did you eat a lot I of ice cream it is. no I did everything right dropped the water and everything else afterwards and I gained a pound that was the point when I decided what was the you know side what? effects like when you were on it have you ever tried fatigue it? Yeah. severe fatigue Andrew have you ever had it yeah heat yeah, I gave it to him it's fucking uh, Yeah, it was, it was just a miserable existence. I swear I almost killed myself. Honest to God, I, never the, touch the, it again. I would the rather... Worst, I think the worst thing for me was, was the effect on my training. I think DMP is one of those things that people don't talk about. It's, it's, when I first started, people would whisper about trend in the gym. That would be the, the thing that no one... And then DMP is the thing people whisper about now because it's not... Because people say, oh, it's the easy way out. Honest to God, I'd I would rather... rather cardio and I would fucking rather cardio. One, one, yeah. of the, one of the guys from the group and he's one of the more active guys in the group he asked me to be kind of an extra pair of eyes for him um i'm not saying i'm coach i'm not he's not paying me i said i'll help him out yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, that's right. if he, you give he your clients dmp that's fine we understand <laughs> he brought it up he brought dmp up i said i'll never talk about dmp to you never it's one I don't of those things you, be, you don't want to be you don't want to be you don't be culpable for no yeah um never. i Anything else? I'll not sure if we about. might need to cut this out of the YouTube video, but I would go out on a limb and say at a push, sensible monitored DMP use, I feel, is safer than the excessive use of stimulants that people go to these yes, days. Yes, I completely agree. Yeah. Because of the effect on the CNS, the effect on the heart. However, I agree. bearing in mind, you get it from a reputable person and you know the dose That's in the capsule. That's the, the scary bit. But yes, exactly. Just eating, eating less fucking food does the same thing. And that's it, like, clen things like that will get you super physiologically lean. They will get you leaner than you can get naturally. DMP won't. DMP will just increase the rate at which your body disposes of energy. Well, so it will um, not get you it's leaner. A, it's a chemically induced keto in a way, isn't it? It will not get you leaner than you can get yourself by starving. But that's the thing with that. You can diet and you can get yourself completely shredded, get rid of all your body fat using drugs. Yeah. And not doing the really fucking hard training. Well, you could when you don't want to even get up in the morning, but you're you still going to do your cardio. Trend, the, DMP the, the but line. you get you get someone that diets down and gets shredded on DMP and not through training, and you get somebody else that gets themselves shredded through training and diet. The person that's got themselves properly shredded through training and diet is going to look different than the other person. They will have a better look, a harder look. It's not just that as well. That, that it, it's more forgiving. In, in when you diet on drugs, i.e., you rely on drugs, you have water retention issues, you have all that. Well, one of the reasons why the gnat is all come in lean Shreds. and dry and hard 
is because they're not pissing about with drugs, so yeah, they don't have water variable. issues. Yeah, it's simple yeah. as that. They don't have they don't have the water issues. But it's not only that because they've not got something to, to rely on. They've not got that crutch consistently. They Shit, always the work harder. And it works. Exactly. I'll take some more clean. It works. Exactly. Like, look at look I've at da- look that. at David K. DFAC Pro. He's, I think he's won it. I think he, no. I think he's won it four years running this year in Miami. He looks fucking insane. And when he's ready for a show, he's completely shredded. And I mean completely shredded. All, all yeah. the natty guys. Le- leaner like than someone, anybody yeah. that you see winning the British finals. All the finals. natty guys look shredded. But when you see him in a top, they don't look like they go to the gym. And yeah. that, for me, is not a good look. <laughs> no, no? I, I, you need a combination of both. Yeah, somewhere in the middle. But what I find is you get the same thing in the <laughs> reverse. Show you <laughs> right? Does he you, look you like he actually lifts? Ex- exactly the same thing in reverse, in that you get those that build on drugs. And then in the same way when you remove the fat burners when they diet on drugs, they don't sustain condition, they don't sustain shape and they get fat. When they, when they build on drugs and you remove the drugs, they get small. And then that just furthers the fact that they feel yeah, they need no, to stay on great, drugs. When, when you build a physique oh, you, through hard work and nutrition, break? you hold it. How are those burpees you don't lose it when you come off. Yeah. So to bring this back down to a T, Best approach to off-season, we didn't get anywhere with that. A cup no. of tea? <laughs> Don't get fat. Are we having a cup of tea? Don't throw all your tools in at once. <coughs> Don't rely on hormones. Focus on training. Get your training right, get your food right, the rest will follow. Sim- sim- yeah. Simply put, if you can't grow on food and training alone, then what's the fucking point in putting drugs in? Because when you remove the drugs, you won't hold the size, so therefore you're going to be dependent on drugs, which is commonly known as a drug addict. I think yeah. when you first start training, you know a couple of things for sure. You know. I mean, I don't know if it's different now because social media. When I first started training, I went to a spit and sawdust gym. If you train really hard and you eat well, and you know what well is, you don't need to split hairs over that, you'll get good results. We're about to. Yeah. If you, if you train hard and you eat well, you'll get good results. And then you start getting distracted by drugs and various different protocols and all sorts of bollocks. And eventually you'll come back to the conclusion, oh, actually, I was right in the first place. Just train I, really hard and eat well. My so first three years. Keep it fucking simple. My first three years of training. I thought the only difference between me and a pro was they trained harder than me. So that was my whole motivation. They trained harder than me. I didn't know about drugs. I didn't even know about diet. Uh, and and I, I was eating back jackets, woods and baked beans all the time. And <laughs> I mean, that sounds all right to me. Yeah. Not brilliant, though. Put Protein's an egg on a top. Bit low. Put an egg on top, get you loose and you're fine. Um, best approach to offices in ties in very nice to another question that we had, which we can answer really quickly. Someone asked on Jim Outcasts, do women need to get fat to gain a lot of tissue? No, next question. Simple as that. I mean, that's not just women. There's no need for anyone to get fat to gain a lot of tissue. I think if someone gets to like 130 kilograms and they're really struggling to gain any additional size, that there is maybe a benefit when they reach a true genetic limit to push on in terms of there, weight and there size. There is a logic in the sense that slightly higher body mass will create higher weights moved and therefore build more but tissue. But I don't think that is relevant until someone's already accrued a good amount of size. But what people forget is body fat has androgen receptors. The fatter you are, the more of the drugs you take is in fat and not in muscle. So the fatter you are, the more steroids you need. The fatter you are, the more you aromatize test into estrogen. So your estrogen is going to be higher, which means you're going to get fatter even more. But more is better. Of course, always. Okay. As long as we're clear on that, yeah. more is always better. Uh, <laughs> That's standard bodybuilder logic. <coughs> um, more efficiency. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, no, nobody needs to get fat no. to gain a lot of tissue, regardless of what they're doing. I think a very large male who's been training for a long time might have more justification for doing it. I got fat because I was a greedy bastard. That's a good reason. Uh, we're all going for burgers afterwards. Um, you are. Yeah, well, you're welcome to come. Um, but particularly, I think this was asked by a woman, I'm not sure what she does, is toned figure or trained no figure, like that. that. There's really no need for anyone to get more than... At the same time, if people want to have a life, that's cool. If you're trying to justify you don't need eating to justify. more foods, you could have a brilliant new product from Strong Nutrition. What's that? Glycomax. Yes, buy that. It's not out plug, yet. Plug, plug, plug. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that one that covers that really nicely. Now, I know the question that Andy and Dave are itching to get at, and I'm going to sit to the side a little bit because I'm quite if it fits your macros on this um, well no don't we need you to be involved so that it's an actual discussion yeah, because me and Dave agree you're yeah. science <laughs> you're science me I don't like that it's my shot <laughs> we're just going to sit back um, do we need to reset on. the camera yeah, for we're fine how much time have we used oh oh we're fine um, 
So the biggest question that you see on the boards, on Instagram, and you'll see all sorts of motivational pictures and stuff from people like Joe Wicks, not Joe Wicks, but other people like that, about really calories in versus that. calories in, calories in versus calories out, as long as you're in a deficit, you'll lose weight. Um, so the question was laid out, um, can we discuss calories in versus calories out? The concept of all calories being equal, but then the quality of the macros being important as well. So the quality of the macro and micronutrients you're consuming, as well as the overall caloric value. And as that was Andy that brought that up, I'd like Andy to lead. That's fine with me. Um, so if I eat the same amount of calories as you, and the same amount of macros as you, but mine mostly comes from the little cafe at the top where the lady makes my food, and yours comes from? Grass-fed Wagyu beef. Are you gonna get better results? All the time, yeah. Okay. Um, the thing that seems to have been completely lost within the fitness, fitness industry right now, is there's a big difference it's between... It's even funnier if you call it health and fitness. That, yeah, I, I just completely so dropped ironic. the health side of it. You know, <laughs> so the ironic, health just isn't it? there anymore. <laughs> but, Particularly if you're discussing mental health. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we've got a whole other page for that. <laughs> yeah. Do you have an eating disorder? No, do you want one? <laughs> Come on, compete. No, people seem to have forgot that weight loss and fat loss are two completely different things. Yes, I agree. And thermodynamics, for weight loss, yes, it is absolute. For fat loss, it's not. Okay. And people say a calorie is a calorie regardless of where it's coming from. But then you ask that same person, is a saturated fat the same as a trans fat, same as a monofat, polyunsaturated, and they'll go, no. In terms of caloric content it is, but in terms of its effect on your health, your lipids, <laughs> exactly. nutrient so transport, it, and the, the way you perform, it isn't. And now I, my input to this is that I'm, I'm quite happy with it for fish and macros. I can generally get fairly good results in myself just by eating whatever as long as it fits those macros. But the effect that eating junk has on my training and my performance can be massive, mm -hmm. and that will affect calories out, protein I, I synthesis. I think also you've got to take it in context with where you're trying to go. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to look all right and just feel a bit slimmer, then yeah, if you're, flexible dieting is very, very useful. If yeah. you're Amanda that works at co-op and you're going on holiday in six months, yeah. What's wrong with why Amanda? Are you picking on Amanda? Why? Well, it's just, it's just she's using Amanda yeah. as an example. Why can't you Amanda? She's use fine. Shipler. Amanda's fat. <laughs> yeah. And then there's she's there's, big there's, there's <laughs> Jane, and she wants to step on a regional show stage. Exactly. Completely different context. Uh, right. And yeah. like you said, you know, a bit. I think you touched on something earlier on when you were talking about your own current office. We weren't going to talk about that. No, not that. We got banned for that. Um, was the shop uh, boy? Yeah. Do a fix. That, Carry on. Um, you said about balancing lifestyle. Yeah. And I think that's something that's very important in this as well, in that, you know, it, it depends where you are in balancing your lifestyle. For some people, the reward is out of the restriction, the reward is out of the physique. For other people, yeah, they want to look a bit good in a t-shirt, but not at the cost of their social life or their interaction in other ways. Yeah, but that's the thing though. There's so many people that have come into the competitive side of the arena, and they're the ones that go on all the time about balance. And it's, no, you, you either want to look okay and have a nice normal life, be quite balanced, or you want to be a competitor and you want to do well. And if you want to be a competitor and you want to do well, you've got to sacrifice. You've got to sacrifice time with your family. You've got to sacrifice social events, granted, all sorts, granted, to be good. Granted, there has to be some sacrifice, but I think some people go too far. I got oh. sent a diet the other day, an example, right? Um, and the diet stipulated three asparagus tips and quarter of a red pepper. Refers to your emotional state. Uh, and yeah. you see that... Let's not talk about that. People just go too extreme with that, and they think that because they're competitive, they must be ultra suffering. And I see it in the opposite way as well, where people are overly restrictive because it has to be insanely hard, or I'm not a competitor. And it's like, don't get me wrong, contest prep is hard. Yeah. But but at the same time, you're competing in a local amateur show. You're not earning a fucking living out of it. Yeah. You're not going pro, and there's no diet. chance you're ever going to go pro. Yeah. So on so, the subject of extreme diets, there's a lady in the room at the moment who came to me last year, earlier this year, and she'd been on 660 calories a day from a coach with two hours of cardio. From a coach. For five weeks. Are you a hamster? To the point where she has scars on her forearms from rubbing on the cardio machine. Um, and that was What's apparently- What's a cardio who, machine? Who was that coach? 
It was someone who has no experience in bodybuilding whatsoever. What's but his, if, what's if, his weight, name? if weight didn't go down, he, he used to run a place went, called Belson, apparently. Yeah, if weight didn't go down, calories went down, and that was 600 calories of keto. Yeah, no carbs, um, and that was perfectly healthy. What's up with you? And and when it deemed unsustainable, <sighs> that was the client's fault, and yes. they were made to feel bad. And that's that's my real issue with it. I'd rather someone be on 1,100 calories a day and actually be able to do it, or 1,200 calories, or 1,400 calories. Well, oh, there's definitely an element of being able to have a diet that you can maintain. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I've got a client that I have to build in chocolate muffins and all sorts of yeah, shit that's because the they won't stick to it if I don't. Yeah, but that's the thing. What, what I just said then about the sacrifice and the suffering side of things of competing, I'm not saying that. I'm not being like, oh, you need to suffer. You need to be an 800 calories because retards give people 800 calorie <laughs> diets and go do two hours of cardio because they don't understand anything about the whole situation. What I mean is that you've got to... If you're going to compete, you have to accept the fact that whilst you are sacrifice. getting ready for yeah. your contest, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough, you can't live a normal life whilst you're and doing it. And because people don't want to accept that, you do turn up to a lot of regional shows and see people who go, yeah, they look great, but I don't know why they're here. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah, well, I, I, I can completely sympathise with that, and that's why I take advantage when I'm too not nice. competing or off-season to be, be more social. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but no, I did... I mean, I told you I got I got asked to go and do the PCA after the breaks, yeah, yeah. and I said no. And it was only a week, and it would have been easy. And I, I looked loads better the next weekends, as I always do. But I already told people it was my birthday the weekend before. I already committed to people saying that I was going to be social. I'm going out for food. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And that was more important to me that I had made those promises to people in my life to do that then go and do another show. We were discussing calories in versus calories out and how, if I can surmise briefly, if someone just wants to lose weight, then a reduction in calories is perfectly acceptable. If someone wants to compete, they need to accept that actually the quality of the nutrients they're taking on board is, is also very important. And there's gonna be some suffering, but at yeah. the same time, you get the opposite of that, where you get people that suffer unduly where they make it overly complex and overly hard. I can think of numerous people that they want feel to suffer. They, they feel have, they have to. to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's, like I say, I got a diet center that was three asparagus dip and a quarter of a red pepper. But that was the whole meal? Well, it's just like, hang on a minute, so a half a red pepper is going to be too much? Is it, where's the problem here? You yeah. know what I mean? And this is a Were case... vegan? <laughs> this is a case, no, there was other thing in the diet, but the, the specifics on that was just a case of, you know what? This is just someone trying to make it overly complex to look like they're intelligent yeah. in what they're providing. I think a lot of coaches like to put in spurious bullshit that looks clever. <laughs> you know, like, oh, it's got to be macadamia oil. I can't think of anyone particularly who does that. No, um, strain through a muslin cloth by a virgin. And if you ask why... Good luck finding one of those these days. They won't give you an explanation because they, want to look like they know something that you don't. And actually it's just because they put it in there and they want to appear... I mean, the other thing that gets me with, with all this as well, and I see it all the time, and I really just think, why? I'm going off a little bit on tangent here, but... Really? I'm gonna, yeah, bollocks Standard. here. Standard. Yeah, it is. I'm a wobbler. Um, oh, fuck, I'm sick of dieting. I can't wait. Sick of eating, sorry. I can't wait till this off-season. No, I can diet for comp. Don't do that. Three weeks into comp. Oh, I'm sick of dieting. I can't wait till off-season I can grow. Day after show. Oh, I didn't do very well, it's all fucking politics, but I'll smash it next year, I'll make it undeniable three weeks into off season. I'm sick of eating, I can't... Why the fuck are you doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're miserable as fuck. Yeah, yeah no completely And you're bad. not going to sustain anything and you're not going to be successful at anything but the idea if of, there isn't a level of enjoyment in it. The idea of going to the gym because you enjoy it is, is very much dead now. Like, if you go to the gym and you've been doing it for six months, then it's automatically assumed that you're going to compete. Yeah. Particularly among like your 18, 19 year olds. I'm about 30 years behind then. <laughs> but you see, all the time people, I get customers all the time. I've been going to the gym for six months, I think I might compete. Why? Have you been to a show? Can, can I just have a coffee, bitch? Yes. Brew, please. There was bits in mine. Oh, he was, he was doing customers. Oh, sorry. That is his job, isn't it? Well, I mean, 50-50. All right, then. Anyway, continue. Um, can't remember where we're going with that. Competitors six months uh, feel they have to compete. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but, you know, because physique and so on is seen as being very accessible. Um, you know, it's your talking and the audience has left. Yeah, I know. I know. 
Right. They've gone off to steal my proteins. Oh, coffee. Oh, I see. Um, is there anything anyone would like to add on calories in, calories out, macronutrients? Um, right, yeah, here's a, here's a topical question. Oh, there we go. Shut the fuck up, you. Just because your beard's shit. BMR, right? Or people using BMR calculation to calculate the number of calories oh, they need. I fucking hate this shit. So do I. I can't stand it. Thank you. Now, all the time. Um, can you manipulate your diet to a point where you can consume technically excess calories based on what your traditional, your original um, maintenance value was by choosing certain foods? So you actually end up being in a calorie surplus. Surplus. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word for some reason, but you get leaner because your body's burning more efficiently and going through calories. At if I were to get one of my we're diets talking from food or supplements, all food based. Food based. Food if food I were to get one of my no diets, chemical stimulant. If I were to get one of my diets from six from from two years ago, and jump straight onto it, I feel I would probably gain fat quite rapidly. But if I started out with that as a baseline, but reduced the volumes and, and eat them built into it. I feel like I would probably be able to sustain it at that increase point. the amount of calories that I would, but that will be through an increase in neat, an increase in muscle mass. Um, I don't think it's through a, a, an inherent manipulation of my BMR. I think it's through doing things that increase my BMR externally to that. What I will say is, looking at the studies from the ISSN and controversially a lot of the stuff that Scott Francis puts out, if you work out a diet for someone, like let's say. I lose, ca I lose weight if I eat less than 3,000 calories. So I put myself together a diet that's 2,500 calories, and I add calories to it purely from protein. I will continue to get leaner, despite the fact that, based on the calories, I'm now in a surplus, mm -hmm. because the calories I've added are purely from protein. Well, my point was this. Certain calories, certain foods require more calories to digest. Yeah, yeah thermic effect of food. Yes, so yeah. obviously, technically, you're increasing your calorie burn but you're not doing any more exercise yeah you're not doing any more activity just by the foods you choose yeah so effectively you could eat more and lose weight yeah we in agreement i i agree with that thank you I, sir. I've, I've seen it i've seen it too many times it's yeah, like, so it's like i was saying weight loss fat loss is two different things people yeah. say you can't grow whilst you're getting ready for a show you can't but you can, you can that's but something else that I've seen happen over and over you, and over. You again. can, but I, I do to a degree. I, I would question that if you're growing going into a show, that your off season has been far from optimum. Yeah, that's absolutely. not what you said the other day. Yeah, because far from optimum wasn't the word you used. You told me to be polite and non controversial. Okay. I did say that, yeah. <laughs> don't, what don't, I said don't. was you'd been a lazy fat fuck in the off season and not worked <laughs> that out. That is what you said, yeah. Are we referring particularly to Ice Cream Gate? Or your prep post ice cream gate. Um, yeah, the one post post ice cream gate. Yeah. <laughs> now this is kind of similar, but um, slightly down another trail. We're allowed kinda, to do that. I kind of yeah. <laughs> I touched base earlier on when I said previously when I've rebounded from a show, I would increase my calories and I would get issues. And when I say issues, usually what would happen is I would increase my calories and I would continue to lose weight like a lot and then I'd have to eat double them again mm. and um, I found Just out of curiosity when you had to increase your calories were you going to very high dense calorie sources in order to do it same foods were you eating shit or were you eating more. clean foods it was a combination I would eat a lot of clean food and then when there just wasn't when it became I've really seen difficult Instagram pop tarts yeah I mean yeah there's a lot of pop tarts so you mean the, the thing but, that yeah a lot of people would I've seen it before in guys with similar body types to myself. When they try to bulk, they throw in a load of calories, then their metabolism just goes crazy. And then they're having to increase calories again and again. Does the metabolism go crazy? Does the meat go crazy? People go to cheap, fast acting calories in order to gain the calories. Mm. When I see people that stick to the old staples of pasta, rice, bread, you know, uh, potatoes, should I say, and meats, this metabolic rate doesn't run away with them, but when they start adding in ice cream or liquid calories, it seems to be that the metabolic rate can then run away with them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, it's it doesn't. It doesn't get that bad. Ice cream. The I, thing I is, it's not cream. only that. When you get people, Ooh, touch ice cream. What? 
I love ice cream. I want ice cream. I love, I love, I love ice cream. Fucking when, ice cream. When, it comes, when it comes to people trying to exponentially like increase the there. calorie intake and they say, oh, I'm losing weight even though I've increased my calories or my weight isn't going up, my initial thought isn't immediate. Uh, well, your metabolism has just started upregulating to such an extent that it's yeah. over, it's, it's still keeping you in a deficit. Mm -hmm. I've had people come to me, I'm having 4,000 calories a day, I can't grow. What do we do? Like, how can I get extra calories in? And I say, well, don't think about increasing your calories or changing your expenditure. And I focus on increasing the digestive health, yeah. the mm. ability to absorb and utilize the, the nutrients that they're already taking in. And would and you say insulin sensitivity in there as well? Yeah. Because that's one of my big things is oh, supporting insulin sensitivity. That's yeah. it. If, Glucose if, disposal. If you, if you make yeah. sure that Burberry, your body is functioning, it. if your body's functioning well, health being, being a key parameter that you're supposed to focus on, which I always do, you can get a lot more from a lot less. Oh yeah. Calories, drugs, supplements, training, everything. Uh, the, I, the, the better your body's functioning, the more you're gonna get. If I, com I completely yeah. agree, but I'm saying, what if the individual's healthy and their digestive, digestive system is is, it, is, it, is this post-show? Post-show or in general. It's you know. rare that you get someone that you can pile that much food into them clean and everything working well that they don't respond. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it is rare. I, mean, I think quite Rick, often, Rick will back yeah, me up on rare, this. It's rare, it happens. That, ha that happens, a lot of people that that happens like to me. me. Rick will back me up. I can diet, get ready for a show. I competed in September 2016, 16, wasn't it? Yeah. And until, when was it? Until about May, June, around the time when I tore my patella tendon. Yeah. I was still lean, like yeah. really lean though. Mm. Like my obliques were showing all the way to the bottom. I was, I was lean and I was eating largely whatever the fuck I wanted. Mm -hmm. Cardio, I was still doing bits, but like healthy off season cardio, like half an hour. Your health three, maintenance more three, than anything else. Three times a week at the most. Um, I was still training really hard. And then like that, Fat party man. ended. Mm. And all so, of a sudden, the crap. fat gain was just exponential. <laughs> my diet didn't change, my training yeah. didn't change, just all of a sudden my body just went, <laughs> fuck off. Yeah. And that was it. I think you'll find as well that a lot of people lie. The amount yeah. of people that have said, oh, I'm eating loads, I'm doing this and I just can't yeah. grow. And then when you actually get into them, it's like, you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had that conversation this morning, the amount yeah, of people yeah. we have in here that just don't eat. Yeah. We, we've had, we had someone in the shop about four or five weeks ago um, I'm taking 60 megs of D bowl a day, I'm test, deco, I just can't grow. What have you eaten today? It was three o'clock, I had some toast for breakfast. Yeah. That, that again comes back to it. eating as much as you need to every single day. It's fucking difficult waking up full from I the day before it's, and it's, needing to eat. I think, I mean, I work nights and uh, as soon as I go over working four nights a week, I don't know why. Work nights is a romancer of the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Night repair of church roots. Uh, <laughs> um, my alarm clock doesn't work. Doesn't work. I, I don't care what anyone says. I can set my alarm like 20 times and I won't get up to it. It's, it's what nights do to you. Lazy bastard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it gets in the pain. It's, you have to make sure you get up yeah. to get that first meal in. He wants to, to get my ready beforehand. And I find that's essential. Yeah. Making sure you're. you're you're hydrated before your first meal. I think yeah. that sets you up for the day. I find Big as well, I, I find very commonly that if I miss a couple of meals for whatever reason, my appetite just tanks. I, uh, I'm just not hungry. I know people are gonna disagree with me with this, but I don't buy into the concept of endomorph, ectomorph and mesomorph. I buy into behaviors. I, I think there's, there, no, I disagree because there are- People, I always used to tell people I was an endomorph. There are predispositions to and I was, fat gain I was, or non-fat gain was, genetically within people. This has been proven time and time again. I was a lazy fat fuck, so I had an endomorph's body. And when I changed my behaviours, my body type changed. Yeah, but your body fat, you, like a somatotype isn't isn't decided by your body fat percentage. I don't. I don't. I mean, feel you, you you look at someone like Usain Bolt. Right. Yeah. What 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 somatotype would people say he is? Ecto. They would say he's an ectomorph. Yeah. And then look at Andy Bolton. What? Yeah. Say an endo. If Andy Bolton dieted down and got rid of all of his body fat, would he look like Usain Bolt? No, a bit of colour for a start. Be, okay, I I feel that these body, I there feel are there are differences from people to people. That's why you get some people that have got super wide shoulders, very narrow waists, huge legs. You get other people that are straight up and down. And then there's diet wise, you take an endo, they have a tablespoon of rice, and they gain a stone. 
I, of an ecto, I, I genuinely they, feel that a lot of these all day and they're still skinny. External yeah. appearances are but down I to you find with behaviors. those people that a lot of it's down to food from what I've types seen. as well that yeah. exaggerates. You, know, you can get fat ecto models. Also diet yeah. mm. through growing up. Okay. Yeah. So well, it's been, it's been well proven that um, children born of, of parents that don't eat are going to be obese because the DNA expression that's passed through the sperm actually means that those people are born with a predisposition within their bodies that they're going to have a low food intake so their body is very preservative of calories so I know there were some studies done that, that showed that it was epigenomics is what it's called the point I was going to make anyway leading on from that is that I find generally speaking people who can't gain weight forget to eat so they might eat 4,000 yeah. calories a day, but there'll be one or two days a week where they go, oh, fuck it, I can't be um, wrong today. Yeah, and, and, the people, and, and the people who can't lose weight, they might work really hard and eat 1,800 calories a day, five, six days a week, but there'll be that one day when they go, oh, fuck it. And people forget this, that it's not really... People look at days when you should look at a block period of time. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's not... Average someone's calories over the month. That's yes. what actually matters. Yeah, exactly. But people seem to be focused on day to day, and it's like... And then they'll be like, oh, right, I'm just going to have a cheat meal. And that, that's the thing as well. Cheat meals. Yeah. I've got nothing against them. But why is it that people seem to think that because they're allowed a cheat meal, they have to eat more than a small fucking planet in that meal? Yeah. I, I have no issue with cheat meals. I just wish people would stop trying to fucking justify them based on some kind of obscure bullshit pseudoscience. Just no, say, I'm going out for a cheat meal. My body doesn't I'm, crave pizza. I just like pizza. Yeah, but, but say that. <laughs> There's no yeah. I'm going out physical for pizza. reason for me to have pizza. I just like it. I say just say that. You shouldn't need to justify what you're doing at all. But if you feel the need to justify yourself, people, I'm going out for a pizza because I want a pizza. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't need to go, oh, well, I'm so depleted. Uh, if you're depleted, go and have 200 grams of oats. But but people want to justify yeah. eating shit. You don't need to justify eating shit. If you want to eat shit, you're it's a fully grown man. You're an yeah. adult. No one gives a fuck. No one cares. Like, <coughs> if Andy decided to become a 25 stone fat man, I wouldn't care. It, it like makes no sense to me. I mean, yeah, you, are, I, you are vertically challenged, Andy. Yeah, Let's if, be if fair. I, if I was 25 stone, I would be able to roll everyone. But it, you would be cool. But it wouldn't make any odds to me. I don't care <laughs> in the slightest. But people feel they need to justify um, their shit decisions. <laughs> I've forgotten the question. Uh, we, we were Cheeks, on calories we in, calories cheap. out. Um, got onto cheap meals. <laughs> Somebody um, mentioned pizza and he just went. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, pizza. I would like to touch on. You're not touching me at all, you freak. That's why I'm saying. <sighs> Hitting lagging body parts, um, whether people well, feel a, a higher or a lower frequency approach is appropriate. Um, I know. Depends neither. on the person. Neither. I feel if you've got a lagging body part, you should hit it every three to four days. I feel you should just be efficient in your training of that body part, as you have experienced. Yes. How many sets do you do on your biceps, Richard? Two. And how much have they grown in the last month? Inch and a half. And I've trained them every seven to ten days. Because you are back on cycle. No. No, is that not the answer? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because you are efficient. Let's just undo everything that we said about drugs <laughs> before. No, I mean I feel my answer's valid. I, I think quite often with lagging body parts, when you actually get to the person and look at the person, generally speaking, it's an issue with their training. And it's not there are a few that it, it, it's a connective issue in that the brain just isn't connecting with that muscle and they're just not getting the stimulation they want in that muscle. Uh, it's not necessarily down that they're doing shit exercise and they're not training hard, it's just they don't have that connection. But I, I've yet to find somebody that has real good genetics in every part of their body except a bicep. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's, you can have very short biceps, and overall your arms yeah, you aren't can. going to be that big. But, but you, you, but the, the the thing is, it's usually down to some aspect of how you stimulate growth that causes the issue. So, in a nutshell, yeah. your advice would be to get someone who understands biomechanics to look at the way you're training that body part and see if you can find a better or more efficient. Or way go of back to basics and just start again. Okay. Forget the way go back to feel if, if yeah. you're not having a body part responding focus on making yourself feel that body part working would you I agree I'm a low volume guy personally I've always responded better to low volume and that means 
Yeah, but you when, work nights, so it's probably something to do with your lifestyle as well, where you respond better to low volume. Personally, high volume just makes me fucking tired. It bores me. It's boring. It's you like high volume? I love high volume. Low volume, you know, you've got one or two sets to put everything you have into Balls those to the wall, sets. Let's in, go to into those sort of thing, exactly, yeah. and you know you're gonna fucking kill it every time. Yeah. And I know from a scientific perspective, the studies are now showing that as long as you hit true muscular failure, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. So whatever approach mentally you find I, I've, easiest to hit I've always way. said this, you can train hard for a short period of time, or you can train long. You can't do both. Mm -hmm. There will be a trade-off. That's not to say that people who train high volume don't train hard, but the intensity is going to be less within each individual set, See, but the total intensity will be the same. And it's basically fibre breakdown. People say that, but I've always done high volume, and always train hard and what, 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 what was what was the leg workout like that you did with me we did it last night i wanted to die <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And is, did, did i let up with the intensity at any point no but it's it's very different um and i feel a different kind of doms because you've done both. high intensity with me haven't you it's been day. very low volume very focused work yeah uh, and, we, and like so andy said, does a thing where you do um try this at home kids you do leg press similar kind of range of motion to yourself uh, you do one rep time and attention, one rep quick. If this isn't right, I apologise, but this is what I've done for the last two years anyway. Uh, so one rep time and attention, one rep normal, one rep time and attention, two reps normal, one rep time and attention, three reps normal. You keep going until yeah, yeah, yeah. you hit ten reps. Um, and you do that time and attention rep, and it's almost like a respite between the volume sets, but that time and attention rep becomes harder mm -hmm. and harder and harder mm -hmm. and harder. And I feel it today in my glutes and my hamstrings and my quads. Um, when I do what you did with us, I get a much sharper dom, but kind of two, three days later. Mm. Um, but the, the key factor between the two of them is the intensity. You've got to go into that special place in your head. Yeah. Those last three or four sets. You can't, you can't go through the motions. No. Those last three or four sets on the one that you do, everything in your head is going, fuck this. Mm. You've done one and one, one and two, one and three, one, all the way up to seven. Fuck this, I've had enough. Um, and you can do one or two sets and, and you're done. Um, and absolutely the same with you when you're doing the high intensity time and attention stuff you get kind of halfway through and if there isn't someone there or you're not in that place in your head to push through you just go oh that's enough that and the, the magic yeah. really comes in pushing through mm -hmm. that but I mean from a from a fiber breakdown point of view the, the the higher the volume basically you start off with surface fibers you recruit them and then as they fatigue you start going deeper and deeper and deeper into the muscle to recruit more and more fiber the difference between that and the sort of high intensity approach is that because it's so intense you dig deep straight away so the net effect is the same yeah you know you dig in deeper into the muscle to recruit more fiber it's just the way you approach it is different yeah. now for some people like ourselves i'd be bored fucking stupid and halfway through the set it wouldn't be a case of pain i'd just be fed up yeah mm -hmm. so i'd prefer to get under it and shit myself in the sense of it's all out fucking war and but that, for other people that's that why don't, I always say you've got to find a training style that keeps you coming back and that you enjoy. Yeah. Because there's, there's, there's something the, else as well. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's um, fine. I, I I personally expend en energy very quickly. That's why I have to eat so much. And I get when I get bored, and I get very fucking fatigued very quickly from from high volume. And I find I need to get in. I don't watch the clock, but it's kept short because I know I've got a small window in there to put in as much as I can because otherwise I'm not gonna have a pump I'm not gonna have any strength so I need to get those sets in quickly yeah. and I need to smash as much as I can into those sets and put all my intensity into those few sets I have because otherwise I'm just dead I think what we can agree on is the thing that doesn't work is mincing through the motions for yeah. six exercises for four sets of eight to twelve reps on each exercise and going home I yeah. mean there was a thread recently about do you have to be sick in a workout to to regard it as being a good workout. And no, you don't, but you do have to get fucking uncomfortable. Oh yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, uh, and If you don't get uncomfortable, you're not forcing your body to adapt. No. So I've been sick for the first time training legs after doing the one that you showed us, but doing it on my own. And it wasn't particularly due to the intensity, the intensity was a factor, but it's just because you get, when Dave gets people to use a leg press, there's always one. Um, he gets you to, pull your abdomen in, mm. suck your abs in, and it just seems to bring all my food. All, all the innies. Makes all the innies come outy, and I think that was it more than, more than anything specifically. 
Um, so lagging body parts, um, decided that it was more. Um, did you want to talk about TUT versus regular tempo training, Dave? Well, it, it's a tool, but what people mistakenly ah. do with TUT, all right. Sorry, uh, we had two that are quite similar. So range of motion versus working the contraction. Same thing. Are they? So oh. would you say that it's more important for someone to work the full range of motion when they're training their biceps? Or for them to focus on the part of the motion that they feel the most contraction Actually, in. People like Jason Hugh, who do those miniature wraps. Yeah. And he looks fucking phenomenal. Yeah. You know? But would he look phenomenal however he trained? That's the question. There, exactly. there is a thing about that. And I think another thing is that for most people, you want to move over the greatest range, so therefore you recruit the greatest number of fibre. And yeah. you stimulate the greatest range of muscle, therefore you get the greatest fibre recruitment, therefore you get the greatest stimulation for growth. Um, I think people talk about branch warren, but what you forget about branch warren is most people when they bench press, what they do is they push a bar. When branch warren bench presses, what he does is he flexes his pec. And that sounds stupid, but that key difference in the fact that when he moves a weight, his mind muscle control is so good that he just contracts the muscle to move the weight. And that's the ultimate, if anyone wants to be heading for the real sort of zen of training is you want to get to the point where when you move away on an exercise you move it by contracting that muscle and i know that sounds crazy well i do that anyway no you fucking don't no. you bench press you use your triceps your delts and fuck knows all sorts yeah. you don't just flex the pec uh, and so it, it's for most people you want to be training over the safest greatest range and i give you the demonstration about muscle shortening with the preacher bet curl yeah um, when you don't, what happens, and this is very evident in biceps, and if you want to test it, get on preacher bench, sit really low down, extend, and then just get someone to just put a finger pressure to extend another quarter of an inch. And what you'll find is your forearm will pull, the lower bicep will pull. Thought my bicep was going to tear. And, and like what it is... It's almost like going, come on now, Dave, stop fucking about. Because I, I was genuinely concerned something was going to pop. The bottom end of the bicep near the attachment, the fibres stop moving. So muscle shortening means that the, the element of the muscle that contracts and expands is shorter within the muscle because the range has been limited. So if you want to maximise growth, then obviously you want to maximise the working range of the muscle. But as you get more advanced, you might find that a partial movement because of the flexation and the ability you have to control that muscle correctly with your brain means that you don't need to go the full range. So as a general rule, if someone is advanced enough to know that that's effective for them, that's fine, but for the majority of trainers... 99% of people... Do you I agree? would say you never get there. For me, I, there's an old saying, partial reps, partial development, and I just think that's complete bullshit. Okay. It's like Dave's saying, you, the greater the range of motion, the greater fibre recruitment, so the greater growth you're going to get. If you allow flexibility to become an issue, where it becomes a hindrance. So you don't focus on flexibility at all, you never stretch, you end up tight. And most you, people you, don't stretch though. No, but that's it, most people don't. Like, I do, I stretch a lot. Mm. And I use a, a, a shorter range of motion on almost every single exercise. Do you use, do you use uh, stretching under tension, like under, under, under a weight? Like DC Some, style? Or, yeah. yeah, or like DC, or do you do it like, Static. Sta either static or underweight. Right. Um, is it dynamic, that? I no, dy it's dynamic's when you bounce. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, that's yeah. the rapid shit, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah I, I, just, <laughs> I, just, I just... I don't stretch. Hey? I don't stretch. You never I do. stretch. Reach the ice cream out of the freezer. Because um, the thing is, for me, everything's restricted. I don't do full range of motion. I, use, I, find the, I, I find, for me, the most active range of motion. And I will work through that area. So... Now, do you find, so when you train, what do you feel? Do you just feel, obviously feel the muscle more? That's us. Yeah, it is us. So That's weird it goes back to my point about the, the connection. Because you feel the muscle, no. oh, the oh, load oh. you're using is focused on the target muscle that you're trying to work with. Yeah. But oh, that's what, what I'm talking that's about is for most people, they need to start by going all the way through. 
at the start, and it's particularly if they don't People stretch. People need to focus more on trying to get to this stage. Yeah, they're focusing on that muscle. Model. But again, it doesn't mean that they have to focus on partial range. They just have no, to yeah. focus on feel of the muscle engagement throughout the exercise. Yeah. Uh, I know what you're saying because there are portions of range in certain movements for me where, like you said, the feel goes. Yeah. But what I've always focused on doing is is getting to the point where the feel's there throughout the whole range, which I now have. Three o'clock. So. There isn't an exercise I do two more. that within a rep, I ain't feeling it where I want to feel it. Yeah. Uh, exactly. But that's taken 20 years to get there. Yeah. You know? Um, and a lot of focus and playing around and, and experimentation as well. Yeah. So, I mean, these two guys have both been training for, Dave's been training for what, 20 years? 30. 30 years. I've been training for 16. Um, I personally. I kind of sit between the two of you and there's certain exercises I feel full range of motion is beneficial, there's other exercises, chest being a good one actually where I, I, I do feel that I hit most of the muscle fibres in the middle of the movement, but um, different opinions, same question. Um, we've got time for two more, is there anything that any of you guys want to bring up specifically or shall we work through some more of the ones we've got on here? I've had a brain fart so... Okay well while you've had a brain fart we'll hit you with some drug questions. <coughs> Don't do them, kids. They're bad for you. Insulin growth hormone. If someone is going to use oh, them, why? Because he asked last time you were here and you didn't answer him. Why? 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 Why do you feel you need to need growth? And it, right, you hey, think you're I massive? don't. I don't. The great public want to know. Okay, look. Honest opinion, and I'm, I don't give a fuck about the science here. Well, actually, the science does back it up more recently anyway. You're not going to get massive off growth, so forget that one straight away. What you will do with growth is you'll improve your sleep quality, you'll improve your recovery, and you can improve your general health. I've said for a long time, if growth hormone was rebranded as get a little bit leaner, have slightly better skin, maybe sleep a bit better hormone, it wouldn't be as popular, but it would be a more accurate representation. I agree. It it's unfortunately, it's unfortunately named because of its action uh, pre-puberty in... Uh, in um, in its action within the body. So, you don't feel that growth is particularly effective for growth, and I've spoke to you about this at length before, you feel that insulin isn't effective for true muscle growth, it's more for glycogen loading, fullness. What, kind of I, what I've seen is when people take insulin or growth in insulin, they get huge. Yep. And they can get huge in pretty good condition. And the problem is that a lot of people at that point switch off. They but hear that and go, ah, cool, good. It's not retainable mass. You remove the glycogen, well, you remove the insulin and growth, and they just become a smaller version of the former self. Um, Me? Anyone we know? Yeah. We're all balanced. Who? You? No, no, no. It's me. Oh, it's Aww, you. Oh, mate. Well, I, see, I got I got all excited to have a bit of an argument with someone. Uh, anyway, carry on. So, so, full of glycogen, not maintainable, not And I don't think you make, and the other thing is, all right, when we take steroids, yes, we accelerate the growth process. But we don't necessarily Rose. extend the growth process beyond what our natural capability is to support. Rose. Because ultimately, growth is bottlenecked by this. Our digestive tract, our ability to warm nutrition, we'll and our ability to get that nutrition where we need it, it, it is, for most people, the restrictive element of our growth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you take insulin, and that increases that process. So what happens when you remove the insulin? You lose all your gains, bro. You lose that process. So how are you gonna sustain the mass if you haven't got the support network behind it to sustain it? And the other thing is that and again, I, we're talking about very large levels of mass. We're not talking about yeah, no, no. John Hughes gained half a stone. No, and the other thing is as well with it is that insulin in its own right has a destructive nature in our processes because it causes insulin sensi in, insensitivity, insulin resistance. Yeah. So that ain't gonna suddenly fucking go when you stop taking insulin. You should so you use need a good to quality glucose disposal agent. You should situation. use a good quality glucose disposal agent. Something Especially like one that has berberine in it. A thousand milligrams of berberine, yes. you say. Uh, <laughs> shameless plug. Okay, so, uh, so Dave, is there an ideal candidate or any under any under any circumstances would you recommend someone to be taking slim? No. No. Honestly. Yeah. So with that in mind, 
What was you? You used high dose slim and growth in your seventy five IU slim. What was 26 your twenty six IU a farmer growth a day? And, and your opinion on it now is that based on that your was experience a fucking that? waste of thousands of pounds. Genuinely. Genuinely. Fair enough. I mean, I when I were growth at, for health. I'm going to completely agree that high when dose growth like alone is completely. This is not important at all. When there's, I, when there's I no place like that, I consistently used a small amount of pharma growth and a small amount of insulin for a good few months prior. Now, and I don't look like that anymore, which kind of backs up what you said. But then, you were taking tos testosterone as well, and then you stopped taking that. Me? Yeah. No, I never stopped taking that. I think I shrivel up and die. Well, you, you, you lowered it. Oh yeah. yeah. No, but the thing I, is, it's like you, you were saying before about somatotypes, habits. Yeah. All of your habits that you had then. You don't, you don't they're no, not absolutely. implemented in your life. It's, it's very absolutely. difficult to, there's, to there's say, so you know, X this way, X that way, and the results. What, what I will say is that for the vast majority, or I'll we'll put it this way, I'll tone it down. For the vast majority of people that I see use insulin and growth hormone, they'd be better fucking getting in the gym and actually lifting some weight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's not that you have to be a certain level of development to use it. It's just that it's unnecessary. So why, surprisingly for me, would you put drugs in your body that aren't necessary? Everyone thinks because of what I did, I'm a big pro-drug user. I think, I'm not. I think I'm actually very, the opposite. I think yeah. there's a very specific type of person that can use insulin and get yeah, diabetic. something out of it. Yeah, <laughs> there's that. Um, but there's... Its use is very, very technical, very, very tricky. Yes. It requires a huge amount of management and then I don't think, I mean the good thing about insulin is, in a sense, it's cheap as fuck, yeah. it's pennies. That's why it's so popular. But I don't think that the net gains are particularly overly impressive in comparison to not using. If someone were... It's, it's completely overrated. Yeah, very much, very much so. Yeah. Plus the benefit to risk ratio agree. is massively in the wrong direction. I agree. Massively the long term so. issues, every person I take on, I spend three, four weeks sorting their insulin out. And that's just through diet, let alone anything else, mm -hmm. as in the previous diet. Yeah. You know, the amount of people that screw them up with, with and, and it's again, it's, it's oh, I'm overly sciencey because I need to be really technical because this is what all the pros do. How the fuck do you know what the pros do? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever spoke to one? Do you know them personally? And you, I mean, a, a certain professional said to me, and it's very, very true. When I was embarking on the first film, he said to me, no pro athlete discusses his drug use. And it's true. I know certain pro athletes that have claimed to be low users, but I know it's bullshit. But I do know athletes that have genuinely been low users. I had an interview with Ian Harrison, no growth, no insulin, gram, gram and a half a week, most. And the guy was on a fucking 278 pound on stage. So why is it then that the mass monsters from years begone didn't need all this shit and they were still huge? Because only the genetically elite actually put the time and effort into it. But because the, the rest of... It, there's nothing wrong with not being amazing at something. You can get big in the sense of I have seen people that use insulin and growth be very, very large. But I have also seen people that don't use insulin and growth be very, very large. And I'm not convinced that the insulin and growth is actually that much of a factor in the fact that they're so fucking large. So... And when you look at the camel crew, yeah. everyone talks about the camel crew. What's their protocol on growth hormone? Low dose, small amount. Yeah, no. What's their protocol on insulin? If they use it, very low dose. If they use it. So moving on from quite a technical question um, to a really simple one to finish on. Most effective first cycle for the majority of gym users if they're looking at going down that route. I personally would go straight in at 500 milligrams of test for 12 weeks, followed by standard power PCT. 400 to 500 milligram of test, 20 milligram of Novadex a day. Completely agree. That's, cool. that's, that's, that's literally what I tell people. That's Jump. nice and easy. I know that's not exciting. Doesn't need to be all, though. All, all, all the, I would say the is basics this. in anything are not exciting. The, the most basics, foundational work is never exciting. The most important thing you can do pre starting gear is get your hormones tested because that is going to be your benchmark for the rest of your life. That is your holy Bible for recovery because this is what happens. 
and I see it time and time again and I had the unfortunate pleasure of telling somebody this morning that his balls are permanently fucked for the rest of his days because of his previous usage. <coughs> when you do a cycle, if you do PCT, which you should, you recover, you feel fine. Yay, I'm recovered, great. Leave it eight, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it is, I'm gonna go back on cycle. And you do a cycle, you do PCT, and I feel fine. Yeah, I've recovered. What you don't see is that your blood values on your first, before you went to your first cycle, 25 n more. When you did your PCT, after your first cycle, your blood values were 21. When you did PC after your second cycle, your blood values were 18. So on and so forth. And you've had a steady decline. Now you haven't seen <coughs> this. Maybe now. I've got it checked. Because you didn't have a baseline that you could check through every time. The majority of people we see so coming from work. So the first time you realise you fucked up is when it's too fucking late. The majority of people we see coming for blood work come when they generally think so I've probably wrong. been put well not even something's wrong but fuck me I've been pushing my luck for a good few years mm. sometimes five ten years uh, and the stats are there seventy percent of users eventually end up with full testicular failure because they have this gradual progression of decline now apparently I make babies really good when I'm on everything what what you could do me too mm. if you <laughs> test and you see there's a pattern of decline, then you can stay off a bit longer and let them come back up a bit higher before you go back on. But the thing is, at least you can make that informed decision about whether you want to risk fertility and testicular function for the sake of another cycle or not. Instead, the only time when you feel that it's not working is when it's fucked. And then you're ringing me and trying to sort it out. I'm not going to ring you. Uh, and I want to fucking help you, you prick. <laughs> And um, you deserve to be a Jaffa. <laughs> I thought I was, but it's not yours. Right, and uh... she didn't correct you. I know. Fuck. Look after my son. Pull on that bomb. That... <laughs> <laughs> right, bomb show. We're all going for burgers. We're going to get this all edited together. We've got an external microphone, so the quality on the live stream is probably not great. We're going to get it all edited together and we're going to put it out on um, the YouTube.